Today, we're speaking with one of the most popular streamers in the world, Amaranth. Even though you might know her from her hot tub streams or a Vice documentary where she shares her one and a half million dollar monthly income, behind the scenes, she's a business savant who owns multiple gas stations, Texas real estate, and one day has a dream of opening up an animal sanctuary. I was running a character company for children's birthday parties. Did you own the company? Yes. That you did? Yeah. Wow. I didn't expect to learn so much about marketing and business from this, but I did, and you will too. Although before we go into that, Jack, I have to say you've been wearing that shirt nonstop every single time I've seen you recently been wearing that exact same shirt I can wear it like five to six times maybe tens of times and it doesn't stink so that's a huge <laughs> plus for me you know it's funny I was wearing the exact same shirt for like days in a row until Macy made me take it off and put it in the wash. She made you take it off. Yeah, she's just been wearing it too often. Unbound Merino is sponsoring this video. That's the clothing we've been wearing right now. Not even exaggerating. I have been wearing that exact shirt nonstop. I love it. Unbound Merino is a clothing brand that uses the ultimate travel fabric, Merino wool, which is perfectly optimized for packing, comfort, and maximizing your travel experience. The Merino wool is incredibly light, moisture wicking, and odor resistant. And my favorite part from all of this is that it almost feels like you're not wearing anything because of how soft it is. Seriously, guys, I wish you could just reach through your phone screen right now and grab this shirt because I have never had a shirt that felt like this ever before. And trust me, it's insane. Unlike all the other performance clothing brands I've seen, Unbound Merino offers exceptional quality and style. Unbound Merino could help you pack less and embrace the freedom of a minimalistic lifestyle. So check out unboundmerino.com and don't forget to use code ICEDCOFFEE at checkout for 10% off. On top of getting a really, really nice shirt, you're also supporting this podcast. It would mean a ton. Thank you so much, Unbound Merino. And back to the podcast. Thank you for having oh, us over. Yeah. You have a beautiful Thank house. Thank you. You gave us these chalices. Yeah, these are actually the prop maker from Game of Thrones. This, these are the Queen's goblets from King's Landing. Beautiful. Now, where do you get these? Etsy. Really? Yeah, they're on Etsy. Even this is like so fancy. I saw these for sale at Fred Siegel and they're like $200 each. Yeah, that was Amazon. Uh, ah. It was like a pack of eight for $60. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. no, way better. Very fancy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us. We've had an amazing day so far. We went to a ranch. We, we did. saw horses. That was the first time I've ever pet a horse, I think. Congratulations. So, yeah, it was really nice. You live streamed, which is crazy. Yeah. It was that was fun. scary. That was horrifying. Yeah. Graham and I were so nervous about that. Yeah. But if you get killed it, by the horse, it's live on That's stream. true. That's Documented true. Forever. Yeah. You had a really nice uh, chat though on the stream. Yeah, they were pretty friendly. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a whole bunch of just like just angry comments and like mean remarks. But like I went on there, everyone is super nice. And then Alex goes on and I'm reading the comments. Everyone was like, W Alex, go Alex, <laughs> hi yeah. Alex. It was really friendly. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. No, when I have the animal streams, that's when the wholesome people come out. Really? The degenerates don't care about those streams. <laughs> they stay far away. They'll come trash talk my gameplay or okay. my bikini or something. But they, when it comes to animals, though, everyone's pretty nice. Is there like a time of day thing where in the afternoon, mm -hmm. like you get more of like the friendly people, whereas at night you get like the degens no, or like. Morning is way more friendly. Oh, really? Morning's okay. friendly. Because Europeans. They, they're they a nicer culture. <laughs> Got they're, it. They're a finer breed of chat, you okay. know? <laughs> yeah. So tell us a bit of your background. Like, how did you get started doing all of this? Well, I started in 2016. I started doing Twitch back then. Because um, at the time, I was already cosplaying a lot. I had like a little bit of an Instagram following, a little bit of like Facebook. DeviantArt used to be a like art photography platform. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Back in yeah. the day. Now no one cares about it. Mm -hmm. But I had a tiny following there. But back then it wasn't really saturated like it is now. So a small following was still like, whoa, you mm -hmm. have a thousand followers. Wow. Right. <laughs> Nowadays yeah. though, ugh, too many people. So Twitch was trying to expand their creative program. Uh, now you might people watching this now will be like wait that was a thing exactly they stopped hearing about it pretty fast but they invited cosplayers to it and they wanted us to make costumes on live stream in their creative category and the incentive was that if you come on and you create costumes we will lower the amount required to hit partnership of view counts because hmm. it used to be 500 viewers concurrent gaming hmm. to get partner okay but with creative it was only a hundred concurrent viewers so what's a partnership do it gives you sub benefits you get like more of the revenue split you get emotes and stuff um so basically you can monetize your channel at that point but until then could you could you monetize it all or it just wasn't as good only donations got it okay oh, so yeah. you didn't get any sub money no if not, not for a partner yeah really w wouldn't that unincentivize people from like subbing though well you, they couldn't subscribe unless you're oh partner. you couldn't subscribe right 
Oh, wow. Yeah, now they have an yeah. affiliate program. But before there was no affiliate, it was just partnership or bust, basically. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so that got you onto Twitch? Yeah. And then after they stopped doing the creative program push, um, IRL category started surging up. So I kind of just like switched into that with my uh, partnership already that I had gotten kind of like on easy street or whatever. Yeah. Because I, I kind of got in there before most people could. And so that kind of propelled me forward. And then IRL was just going off, which is in real life for people who don't know Twitch. Mm -hmm. And that, that was when you started having people doing non-gameplay activities, like going out, kind of like live vlogging yeah. at conventions or traveling or just talking to people too, to the chat without playing a game was considered IRL. Yeah. So, was that common before Ice Poseidon? Because he was the one that kind of introduced me to that whole like IRL streaming. Him and, yeah. was it Andy Milanakis? Yeah, oh, I think yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we would see yeah. him because I used to work on Sunset Boulevard, and I would see him with the selfie stick. You would stick. see him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's walking around Sunset Plaza, and he had the, the selfie stick with like a, like three cameras and like lights shining on him. That's crazy. And he was always like walking up and down the street, and then he'd go to like a restaurant and just sit there and place it down on the table, and it was usually like just him, and he'd be talking to it while ordering food. It was wild. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. You but saw I was that. but I was always too afraid to go up and say hi. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, but you knew who he was. I knew. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's hard yeah. to not recognize because right, 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 people right. are just like, who is this 12 year old out here? Right. Yeah. <laughs> who is this 40 year old lady? <laughs> yeah, I remember it from MTV. Yeah. yeah. He had the MTV yeah, yeah, yeah. show. So, what were you doing at the time to sustain yourself? Or was Twitch enough? Well, right before Twitch, I was running a character company for children's birthday parties. So, like, it would be Disney without saying Disney, right? The copyright free terms for oh. Cinderella, like Snow White, <laughs> um, Elsa and Anna, like Frozen, you know. So um, you would dress up like yeah, that I would and dress then go up. present mm -hmm. at a kid's party. And then I had party. girls too who would work for me and that we would all go to parties and do events and we would do, like, make a Wish Foundation stuff. We would do like festivals around Houston. Um, I got to be on like a TLC show, The Little Couple. They had a birthday party and they really? hired me to be there as the Snow Queen, Elsa. <laughs> Um, it was really cool because I got to throw the first pitch in the Astros game as Elsa because they had like a mommy and me day. Sure. So it was really cool opportunities like that. Did, and, did uh, that make good fun. money? It was pretty good money for like a non-social media. Now we all have our expectations of what's good money. Yeah. It's completely skewed. But back then it was like $200 for an hour. Are you saying that's fantastic? Yeah, that, I mean, that's good. Like, even with social, with social media, media money, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's still decent. Right, but yeah, only on weekends. Right, right. but so still, yeah, but like, it's actually, like, you do that like up. two hours, like four hundred dollars a yes. weekend is fantastic. Yeah, it was crazy good margins too, because then you would get the costume and you could wear that for like a year, two years, yeah. until you had to replace it. Right. So it was actually incredibly profitable for the time. But the unfortunate thing is, well, fortunate for me, not yeah. fortunate for people who stayed in the industry. Things like COVID are a big. Um, killer of that industry because yeah. then people just stop having parties for a year, two years, three years. So that really sucked. But fortunately, I made the switch before COVID hit. So. Yeah. Yeah, but it was super fun because I would get to go to these extravagant parties. It would be like big homes like this sometimes, like in yeah. nice neighborhoods, and they would have a carriage waiting for Cinderella to come in. So it's like you got to be worshipped and get paid, basically. What, cool. what were the kids like when they hired this out? Like Most of the kids, the kids were, were nice really, and respectful. Oh, yeah. Most yeah. of the kids would listen to you more than they listened to their parents. They respected <laughs> the, the royalty. <laughs> I believe it. Wow. <laughs> So, so yeah. how much would the parents spend on one of those parties? Like, I'd imagine God. this is like a $3,000 kid's birthday party. Oh, probably more than that when you get into like the like the River Oaks neighborhoods, like the really nice neighborhoods for Houston area. Like, Jesus, those houses alone are probably like five to $10 million range. You can imagine yeah. how much they throw to a kid party. I think some of them honestly cost at least $10,000 for like a four-year-old's birthday party. That's great. I don't even remember have, being four. Yeah, because they would have multiple princesses. They would have the horse-drawn carriage. They would have the face painter. They would have the bouncy houses. They would have the catering, the decorations. Sometimes they would bring in a petting zoo. Oh, man. Is this like a birthday party, <laughs> a standard birthday party? For the rich person, yes. The rich people wow. have houses. Yeah. Okay, so you were doing that work, and then you switched over to Twitch. When did you make that switch? What was like the Twitch income versus that income that you can justify going all in on Twitch? Well, I was doing both for a bit, um, and then I guess... I was doing Twitch for about six months. So uh, beginning of 2017 is when I kind of decided that I'm going to switch from going to the parties myself to doing the streaming thing and I'll just send my girls out. To, so I was still managing it, Got but it. Um, I was streaming full time instead. Did you own the company? Yes. That you did? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so what would you pay the other princesses? Like they would just pay mm. you a package yeah, deal yeah. and you'd pay the people underneath you less? 
Does yeah. Make a difference? Like starting out was like yeah. probably 60 an hour. Okay. And then I mean, it's still pretty good if you're yeah. just like dressing up. And then it would go up to like 75 or 80 an hour too. If they've been with me for a while. That is a good business. Yeah. How did business. people find you? Did you market? Like well, how that's did you the grow thing. That? I got into it via Facebook advertising, yeah. a little bit of Google advertising too. That's actually how I got the idea to just go full time into social media because I was yeah. already using the skills of social media marketing with my business and I was thinking like this is the future mm -hmm. is everything's going to be online moving that way if I have this skill I should just go into social media full-time go straight to the source rather than just using it to market a limited right. business that can't really grow beyond Houston without a bunch of hassle and headache thinking about licensing and now, where do you get that uh, mindset though because not everyone thinks like that like where did that start you have parents that thought that way it's like something you saw someone else do that and you're like that's a good idea I think I saw it mostly because um I, I would be in a lot of these cosplay groups mm -hmm. and a lot of the cosplayers were doing this kind of thing too, but in other states like California and it, it would be really popular. Um, California was a big one. I think Florida was a big one where the parks are, right? Mm -hmm. But so they would know, they would be able to go to the park frequent enough to know what the characters look like, know how to model the costumes, know how to act and everything, but then be able to bring that into like a party atmosphere. And yeah. it was a very hot market because it's so much cheaper for some parents to hire the princess for 200 an hour than it is to take their whole family to Disney for the day, sure. you know, and yeah, pay but, for all their friends. But like the business <laughs> aspect of it, like where do you get that from? I like, think it's Were you just, like that growing up as a kid? No, 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 no. I, I was not at all. I think it was just from watching, observing, like seeing how they were expanding their businesses and like how they were advertising. So I would get their Facebook advertisements like suggested i would be like in their groups I actually have groups for it so i was just watching and observing the different princess company groups and yeah. seeing how they were advertising and stuff and then I, I tried it myself and i found it very effective i don't think it's nearly as effective now facebook advertising no. they've raised prices a lot but before i could put like 10 to 50 dollars into a facebook advertisement and make like a thousand dollars in party bookings hmm. although before we go into that guys sorry for the interruption i do have to say that lately i've been taking my health a lot more seriously i've been going to the gym and getting a good night's sleep and i've been eating a lot healthier with their sponsor factor i recently went on vacation with jack actually and i came back and i was like seven pounds heavier and it was from not going to the gym, eating a lot, and I just became kind of lazy. So when I got back, been getting really into fitness, and Factor is something I've really, really, really enjoyed. They sent us a whole bunch of their meals, and I have to say I'm obsessed with them. Factor's meals are also ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do, take one of these out from the refrigerator, put it in the microwave, two minutes later, it's ready to eat, and it tastes really good. You, you have to try it to truly appreciate it, but it is really, really Really good. They make meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. When I'm trying to decide what I want to eat, I take into account three things, how affordable it is, how quickly I can get it, and also how nutritious it is. And Factor actually checks all three of those boxes when usually I only need to check two. You could even choose from more than 34 chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options featuring premium ingredients such as broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Or you could also try the beverage options with smoothies, shakes, and juices. Factor saves me a ton of time and a ton of money. I would highly recommend it. If you're curious what it tastes like, we have a link down below in the description. Or you could go to factor75.com and use the code ICH50 for 50% off your first order. Enjoy. And now with that said, let's get back to the podcast. Have you always been interested in business? Not really, no. no. I think it just happened when I was like going to school for costuming, was looking for money on the side because eventually my my dream was to do like Hollywood, like co costumes, you know, for Marvel or for yeah. like Lord of the Rings type stuff. So I was kind of just trying to figure out how do I take my costuming skills right now and start making money because I'm not at that stage in my yeah. life. And then it kind of just rabbit holed me down into like the business side of costumes like with princess stuff and yeah. cosplay and then that led to social media so it kind of just all like piled together unintentionally for me and i was just watching and observing and then trying it i was like oh but it Did seems you ever like have yeah. a normal job um the most normal was working at the opera and ballet making costumes <laughs> hmm. i guess and then um i worked for some other companies before doing my own princess company like i was an empl i was just Got like a it. contractor yeah, yeah. not really an employee but I would be the performer without owning the business or owning the costumes. And then I was just like, I could run this. These, I can make better costumes than these. And I just kind of did it. Huh. Were you a good student, like throughout middle school, high school? Yeah, pretty good student, I would say. Okay. Um, yeah, I think high school, I was like all in all the AP classes. And okay. then um, 
for a while I was number one in my class and then I and then I got lazy and I dropped to number 20 when I graduated <laughs> but it was there was, eight, there was like eight to nine hundred kids in the class yeah. so I guess it's still pretty good why you get lazy is very good yeah yeah, yeah. What happened there? Why'd you get lazy? Senioritis? I just got tired. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I got tired of that. <laughs> I'm, yeah. But your aspirations in high school were to become a costume maker for Yeah. Home. So it was like this, I realized like none of this matters. <laughs> it's, it seems it's like kind of true, like a right? yeah. Yeah. flow. Just yeah. like in one direction, yeah. you're like heading true north and you're like, okay, just stop here, stop here, yeah. stop here. But for the most part, you kind of like, just like slowly progressed. Yeah. Because I, I got involved in theater in high school. Because at first I was like, do I want to be an actress? And I was like, maybe. But I kind of like the aspect of dressing up and like the creation behind it. So then I was kind of leaning more towards into yeah. the costuming side of theater. Did your parents have any expectations of you of like, you know, we want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or like anything like, or no. were they like very free that you could pursue what you felt was best? They were pretty free. They just wanted me to figure it out so at some point I could stop living under their roof. <laughs> okay. They were not really picky though what I did. Um, and I think that's standard for parents who also were not like particularly high achieving. So I know if like, your parent was like a lawyer or a doctor or had a very successful business, mm -hmm. they like have expectations for you. But for my parents, my mom was a preschool teacher for like her whole career. And my father uh, works with computers and IT, mm -hmm. but not like coding or anything crazy like that, just like software testing. Yeah. So it wasn't like either of them were super entrepreneurial or like super... Um, I guess educated on like an advanced level with like doctorates and things like that. So, did they ever yeah. teach you about money? No, not really. How did you learn about money? Because you had have to, to have like a good education, even going through and running your own business. Yeah, a lot of it was. Um, I had an uncle who was actually running his own small businesses, not like anything super big scale, but that's kind of how I got started, like learning about the business side and, and social media marketing because he had to do it he was actually a dog walker hmm. but it's like how do you let people know about that you have to start it with social media so i would like listen to him talk about money and stuff and then i would kind of like do when i started doing my own business with the princess stuff i'd have to look around like on google and like figure out things like how to do taxes and things like that yeah. so just like i learned as i went i didn't have like a formal education if i just need if i needed to figure something out i would just google it were you always uh self-reliant when it came to that sort of stuff yeah i was, I was pretty self-reliant i guess because you know none of none of my family is particularly successful yeah so i didn't really have anyone to turn to i was just like well well, let me just go to Google and YouTube and things like that and just try to have things explained to me because yeah. for me it's like I went to school for costume design which is not also not particularly a good avenue for learning anything with finance or business yeah. related at all so what do they teach you in costume design <laughs> just like what materials to use I feel like that look, mm -hmm. maybe oh, this Jack. is insensitive maybe I don't know oh, here we go this, Jack I feel like, I feel like right. look I take one <laughs> semester Right, and right. I learn what materials for what colors for what like volume, like how voluminous you want something to be. That's kind of like, right? It wasn't that basic. It was more like it's actually really interesting because it went through fashion history. So you learn different periods of like historical fashion, like Georgian. You learn like like the Regency period, the Victorian age. It's like super interesting to see how the the fashion tastes evolved. And then it went from like being very basic, like togas mm -hmm. and stuff, like with grease. And then it evolved into, let's put a bunch of layers on and cinch it all up. And then it got very lax again in like the 1900s. Where do you think we're headed? Towards I was fashion? Gonna, I, was I think honestly, that, yeah. I think in the I future, think... we're gonna get in like, it's not gonna be wetsuit material, like neoprene, but I think it's gonna be like a one suit you just step in and then you're yes. entire, it's like a, it's like a morph morph suit or whatever, I'm but thinking like more like, comfortable and utility like nanobots, wise. you know, where it can form yeah. and whatever you want it to look like exactly. that day. Perfect fit. Yeah, and then you can like, yeah, it's like super aerated and breathable yes. and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. No, I think definitely. we're going towards that, honestly. I think we're going straight utility, and then people are going to think it's cool. I was about to say, I think we're going back to the 90s fashion. That's what I was about to say. What does that look like? Just oh, 90s. like old kind oh, of yeah, right like In the media look. future, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, the TikTok kids, they all look like my yeah. 90s pictures. It's like pictures. big it's, wash yeah. jeans. Uh -huh. Yeah, the tie-dye yeah. and like, yeah. yeah. High-waisted, yeah, like Little white, white sneakers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one day we're going to go back to the Ed Hardy days. Where it's like the shirt designs, you know that's gonna come back. Oh, at some with the point. flames with or the whatever. The lion, yeah. With the you know jewels, it's gonna come back. Yeah, you used to years. wear that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had the shirts, the t-shirts that had like the design prints on the one side. Looking back, it's awful. Yeah. What was I thinking with the baggy jeans? Terrible. Yeah, it was a great look, man. So, so let's talk about the Twitch yeah. success. 
Was your was your growth linear? Was it exponential? What methods did you use to grow on Twitch? Because I heard we've had a couple Twitch people in here, right? I think one of them said like, what you have to do is just stream for as long as possible, because like then people they like open up the stream and then they leave or they walk to the you know the nearby McDonald's or something, but their stream is running like on their computer. What, what strategies did you use to grow on Twitch? It's a bit complicated because while that in theory is the best way if you already have a following. Um, th that was what the algorithm will reward is you stream, you stream, you stream, you stream, and th that will recommend you to more and more people because it's your watch, your accumulating watch time. Even if you're not the most watched out of say like two people together, uh, say you both stream five hours, just because somebody watches that person more in the five hours does not mean they'll get recommended more because what happens? They log off. If you keep going, you'll eventually surpass them. Hmm. So even if you're not as popular, you know, with like view count or things like that, as long as you accumulate that those minutes of watch time, it'll build up and the algorithm will recommend you more. At least that's how it's been working. When I was like really popping off. This yeah. year I've been kind of sporadic because I've been moving and boxing and all those yeah. things. Um, but it's tough because there's no really discovery on Twitch other than the recommendation section. Or like if you're on a category page, people don't tend to scroll down the category. It's like the top 10, what they can see within the browser window without scrolling, that's what they pick on because people are lazy. Mm -hmm. um, so you actually have to grow on other platforms more where there is discoverability. Like TikTok is a great way now like Twitter, Instagram, that's how I grew was Twitter, Instagram, and then a little bit of YouTube, but YouTube doesn't, isn't like as easy for me because it's always changing the algorithm and yeah. it'll stop recommending if you're like too sexy, so. So what would yeah. you do? Would you just post like cosplay stuff and, and then people just found you organically through those platforms and then mm -hmm. routed you towards the, the Twitch? Yeah, and also my Facebook cosplay page. But eventually I stopped doing cosplay as much because it just wasn't as, profitable it's actually it was actually really sad but that's just the way humans are you would make this amazing armor piece super accurate you would dress up as this character and you would get maybe like 5,000 likes and then you dress up in a misty cosplay which is a tank top and booty shorts from walmart that took you five minutes to put on and it's like 30,000 likes it's like, why bother men are simple <laughs> we don't is, need much is most of the appreciation of cosplaying is that like coming from a male audience or is it a, a female audience is it like the intricacy of the costume itself or is it just the way it looks like what, what is the mm -hmm. appeal because i've personally never been super interested in cosplaying but i'm trying to understand like what why people like it well i think the people that appreciate the art the most are probably women more than men because that seems to be like the type of people who go into it because it's like wow i'm making this thing it's so cool it's so crafty look haha -ha, it's so fun but they tend to do it more because they can monetize it whereas it's harder for guys to monetize cosplay so you end up getting just a bunch of women who are into it mostly and then um the audience though who looks at women's pictures and likes them and engages with them typically are men and the men are going to respond more to the the sexy character than they are like the armored up authentic looking world of warcraft build right, right. <laughs> it just is yeah. that is the nature of sexuality you know yeah. so it's have, tough for sure have but. you noticed that um costumes for halloween if you look at women's costumes it's like sexy uh none sexy yeah, whatever sexy giraffe. and then you look at mm -hmm. men's costumes banana you know what i mean yeah. it's like a peanut butter it's gotta be something, something funny Freddy or spooky. Funny, yeah yeah <laughs> funny so, or scary do you think that that's kind of going down the wrong direction because cosplay is more than about just being sexy right yeah i think the crafting part of cosplay definitely is more about being making it for the art of it like if you compete you do like competitions at conventions it's definitely for the art of it or if a uh, if you can monetize like if a gaming company hires you to to cosplay a new character and like promo it at events or on social media then you can kind of get paid for the art of it but for the most part you know the best monetization is always just going to be the sexy route and so people will start doing this thing like bikini versions of characters <laughs> Like they'll just like make it more sexy if it's not Graham. a sexy character. Like, yeah, yeah, it makes, it makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To me, it's like I think I approach it from a very logical standpoint. If mm -hmm. if your goal is viewership, how do you gain the most viewership? If that's right. the way to do it, that's the way to do it. Right. It's like I just look at what works. You have to look at your motives, right? right? Are you trying to make the most amount of money that you can while you're young, and then do whatever you want to enjoy, or are you trying to share your love of the art, and that's all you care about is sharing that love and finding yeah. people who also resonate? If you have other things going on in your life, you don't need it. For money whatever yeah or if you want to just go the the harder route and monetize the actual 
character part because people will do that they'll just have a different type of patreon or whatever or etsy if they do commissions themselves or if they do tutorials for making stuff like it can be done it's just typically not as much money as quickly yeah yeah so it's very it's perfectly reasonable like to, if they want to do it they can make a lot of money doing it compared to like a nine to five yeah but we're not talking about like millions a month only fans low profit margins low time spent like just like super profitable in that yeah. direction so it just depends what you want yeah so how long do you think it took for you to make like six figures uh, like a six figure salary on a monthly basis on twitch was it like six months a year oh on twitch it's harder because on twitch it didn't really start getting that to the six figure mark from twitch alone until hot to meta uh that was i think 2021 i believe yeah and that kind of exploded so i think after i crossed like 6,000 concurrent viewers or whatever at the time is when you started getting into the six figure. 6,000 concurrent viewers? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, and I was only hitting the six figures um, monetarily too because I was streaming for so long. So what was your schedule like? Like when did you begin to realize that like streaming more is better? I started realizing that around, I guess late 2017, 2018, because I've been streaming like really long since then. Because when I first started streaming, I was doing maybe three to five hours at a time, just trying it out, playing some games, cosplaying, making costumes. And then uh, I rose it to like eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Sometimes I would do like 14, 18 hours. Sometimes I would be on even longer if I did a sleep stream, mm -hmm. things like that. Could you explain a sleep stream? <laughs> Where you literally sleep <clears throat> on stream. So you're streaming. You keep the camera on while you're sleeping. But it, uh, it's like a virtual slumber guys, party. Was yeah. it hard? We should s sleep stream tonight. <laughs> I would be down to sleep stream tonight. Um, we don't have an audience to stream to. Yeah, we just post on Instagrams so like, hey, check out our sleep I stream. Want, no, YouTube. I want the donations. Like, I want that. I'm not going to stream on YouTube. Well, like, we just do it on Twitch. <laughs> I don't want one dude just watching us. One dude just sleep. watching us the whole night. Yeah, waiting for Alex to like same, roll onto his side. The same viewer. <laughs> so what's the okay, like what's activate. the appeal of sleep streams? Like why do people tune into that? Um, different models. Because for guys, they typically get more money doing it because their chat's trying to mess with them. And so their chat will be like playing react content, like they'll be doing media share to try and wake the guy up or just to make each other laugh. But girls' chats environments aren't quite as like, haha, bumping elbows, buddy, buddy. They're more like, I don't know what the word is, uh, sexual, <laughs> I guess. Got it. Sure. So they'll be like, like, what if she just starts taking off her top right now, forgets she's streaming? Oh my God. If she forgets she's streaming. Yeah, if she could forget she's so, live. But people are commenting this. Yeah, stuff like that. Or they're like, what I would do to her right now, like while she's sleeping. <laughs> Some people are really creepy. And others are like, why are you guys watching this? Y'all are weird. They're like criticizing each other for watching it while they're watching it. It's kind of funny. So do you get a good night of sleep when you're sleep streaming? Because I feel like I, I could just not sleep. I do. I have this incredible talent to fall asleep anywhere, regardless of how much light, how much noise, how, whatever's happening. So I, I can get a pretty good night's sleep. I actually used to get more sleep doing that than Why? not. Because I would have chat hit sub goals to let me sleep longer to justify not being productive for those hours. Okay. Whoa. So I could get like nine, 10 hours of sleep. And how much would you make in a sleep stream? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to quantify that because I, I never broke it down like that. Because it would just be one continuous like 24 hour, 40 hour If you were stream. to just guess. I'd say probably uh, if you count just on Twitch, probably you don't know like a couple thousand dollars but if you count like the conversions potentially to only fans yeah. while i'm sleeping because they're clicking on links and whatever um then maybe like 10 to fifteen thousand. that's wild yeah so why not just do that every night i would see like 10 grand a night and say i may as well do this now like i'm not gonna do it forever but like, hey, every single night. The, schedu the, the scheduling gets complicated. How and so? then also, because um, I have photo shoots and stuff I have to do like the next morning sometimes, or if I'll have but, sponsorship but things. But couldn't you just end it do. when you wake up? Like wake up and be like, all right, stream. Thanks so much. I'm up now. <laughs> 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 See ya. <laughs> that is an angle. Potentially, maybe. That's a good idea. But maybe I, maybe I just switch to I only stream my sleeping and then I enjoy yeah. the Why rest don't of my you? day. Yeah. Has it, now, you're working while you're yeah. sleeping. Now, has, <laughs> has there been a time, though, where you've woken up and forgot that you were streaming? Or does that not happen? No, it's never happened. Okay. Never, so far. 
Um, I don't do it as much. I don't know. I feel like if you do it too much, it would become no longer novelty. Okay. But True. maybe what I would should do instead is I should just invite girls over for sleepovers and we only stream us doing like getting ready for bed activities sleepover stuff and then we stop streaming when we wake up then you can call it sleeping with whoever in the title yeah genius that's genius that's a good idea i think if you were to stream yourself sleeping that's a untapped opportunity that i think so many people could get on because you're not doing anything anyway so you may as well be working while you sleep Mm -hmm. i think that's the most useful why don't you do Alex? it, I, I'm, like I'm not going to stream myself. I'm just because saying, just in general, I think it's a good thing idea. Over and over, sleep stream only. Like you start it an hour before bed, and then you end it like, you know, thirty minutes after you wake up. Who's going to tune into that after like four times? Okay, so Graham know. has this idea in his in his brain. He's <laughs> always been this way, where he's just like, do more, post more content. It's about the, the it, frequency it works and because, the volume. Yes, it works Graham, because it's but, it's a treat, right? It's once in a mm, while people right. sleep. Like, I, think I think that there's When the power. door is open, you walk through the door. That's what I think. I, and whether I, that's the making door more will content. Then shut, but you can leave the door open, right? And, no, and, and I don't stay think so. I think social you media is one doors, of the, yeah. What could work to change it up while we're sleeping, different girls coming over, we're sleeping. Maybe I hire people to come in and do random stuff in the middle of the night. Yeah. So people don't know what to expect. Yeah, like awesome. if you get oh, yeah. like up to X amount of dona- donations yeah. or whatever, like something happens or whatever. Yeah, like the top donations, <laughs> like a mariachi band comes through the door. And yeah, just start yeah but, you have to, but you have to have them on standby. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, but you're making that kind of cost. Yeah, but you're making it back. Yeah. You What's gotta really run the numbers on that. I just, I just really thing. like don't think that like people would watch her every single night if she's just doing that yeah. every single night. Yeah. Exactly do you thing. do you agree? Yeah, I do. Okay, all right. I think I'm that's about, like, I mean, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. okay. If it was with other people, then maybe. What other kind of like variety streams would you do? Um. Because you 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 jumped yeah. on the the what was it the hot tub? Yeah. Did and you, that's did you what, come like, up with that? Or no, who, who no. I we already been doing like pool streams, but um, one of the girls decided to do like inflatable hot tub, and they were doing it outside. And I then the thing I did pioneer was moving it inside, where you can control <laughs> the lighting, control the Wi-Fi, control everything. You don't have to can like move ring lights outside. I'm just like just put it in my room. With the hot tub on the ground <laughs> and then that's what everybody started copying that because it is just so much easier you don't, yeah. you don't depend on the weather your ring lights are already right there you're right next to your setup the wi-fi is better how long could you be in the jacuzzi for 12 hours 12 a hours? lot of times how yeah. would you not turn into a prune uh i would you would i just didn't care was it painful at all like no. you because i would get out like after, graham seriously. would be just <laughs> completely <laughs> devastated i'm getting, just saying when, you, when you're in water for that long, your hands and feet shrivel up to a point where it's like, it could be painful. It's not I've never painful. experienced okay, I wanted to, that. What temperature was the water? Was it like a 95? It would start at like 104 when he heated up all the way. Yeah. But then throughout the day, it would, it's, if cause you don't want to have it on because it's really noisy. Yeah. It's like, like the whole time. So I would turn it off when I start the stream. And then throughout the day, it would get down to like 70 degrees. Oh, wow. Eventually, yeah. Uh, how much did your numbers go up when you started doing that? I went from like maybe like anywhere from like four to five thousand viewers concurrently before the hot tub to then uh, at one point it was hitting like twenty twenty two k. Yeah. Was that like thirty k? Was sometimes. that COVID days? Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty crazy. And so, but how do you one up that? Because is there that pressure it's where hard. it's like you're doing that well and you're like, what's next? How could I like keep on this this same path? Yeah, well, at the time, it, it, the drama aspect was kind of doing the job for us. We didn't really have to innovate much because people were acting like it was such a controversial topic. Like, hot tubs, while in the same category as me, that looks so bad to sponsors, blah. blah. They were like really angry about it. Um, and so that drama of trying to get the hot tubs banned, people complaining about it so that. much yeah. online, kind of kept the interest alive for the hot tub section because they get viewers coming in and be like, what is this thing they're doing? <laughs> what is this stuff? And then they would like just start arguing in the chat whether the hot tub should even be allowed on Twitch or not. Um, and then when they finally, when Twitch decided to make the hot tub category and shove us all in there is when people really stopped doing it because the discovery went down, Interesting. unfortunately. Now, what was the reason for the hot tub in the first place? 
Uh, I think it's just a way to kind of subtly convert people to your OnlyFans. I did not find out about you through the hot tub drama that was going on. How <laughs> I found out about you was this um, this bath water thing. Oh, yes. Now, when did this come into play? Uh, because that like made headlines. I was like, oh, this person selling bath water. When did this come into play in terms of like, was it um, when you first started Twitch? Was it in the middle of it? And also... Did you actually, did you make sales? Yeah, I made a lot of sales. Um, that actually was more recent compared to the rest of my career. I think that was last year, maybe like early 2022, or maybe maybe late 21, somewhere like that. It was it kind of blends in for me. But um, there was a woman who was doing fart jar sales, um, and she- Is it Belle? Uh, no? that, was, that was the original bathwater one. Okay. But there was a woman doing fart jar sales at the time. And she was supposedly making a pretty good amount of money, like, like, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand dollars from it. But then she stopped one day and she claimed that her diet to make her make so many fart jars hospitalized her. I think she actually got COVID and changed the reason why she was in the hospital personally. But then she decided to switch to NFT fart jars, which were not as successful. And I don't know how that would work anyways. Um, and so I kind of took over the vacant spot available for fart jar selling. I was like, well, now with her out of the market. <laughs> <laughs> Your competition. The demand is incredibly high. And um, I, I joined that, and then I was like, well, I'm at it since I have all these jars, and I sit in a hot tub, I might as well sell my hot tub water. All right, so, so we'll go, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, hold on. All right, I want to ask first. Of first. All, wait, first of all, how's the audio sound? Is she close enough uh, to the mic? I was going to ask if, oh. if she could just come in a little closer. Oh, shh. Sorry, we're Graham. leaving that in. We're they leaving that Graham. in. Sorry about that. <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> See, if I did that, Graham would be. <laughs> He'd be like, Jack. Screaming. How could you? How could you, Jack? It slipped like this, and then I went to save it, and I overcorrected. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> It'll make for All a great right. clip. What do you think about the ethics of porn? Is it ethical? Is it unethical? Because when we shot with Brett Cooper, she was sharing her opinion on why porn is unethical oh what were her thoughts on that she thought basically it kind of like promoted the objectification of women and that it's not good for the young male mind to see women especially like on your phone you know the, the high availability of porn just like on your mobile the device ease of it I think exactly too. wherever you want to watch it you can watch it and i think that she thinks it's also like corrupting a family unit because like then guys can just like instead of finding a girlfriend or feeling an urge to find a romantic partner um, just going on their phone and getting that instant gratification and then moving to the next day. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it just depends, I guess, what you're looking at. Um, I can also see the side, though, where it's actually better for guys to be able to have that kind of sexual release because then if, say, they're really bad at socializing and they're not quite all there, they get that frustration, those urges out in private instead of bothering women in real life and potentially doing something crazy because they're so frustrated, you know? Um, so I don't know, I can see b both sides, I guess. I, as far as the ethics of it, I don't think it's unethical if both people are consenting and they're happy about like what they're putting out there and the amount of money they're getting paid or whoever's involved, it had to be two people, it could be an orgy, I don't know, <laughs> or solo, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think nowadays it's actually even more ethical because instead of these big companies making porn and controlling like the financial aspects of it and people getting ripped off who are the performers, now they can just make their OnlyFans and set their own prices to whatever they're happy with and do whatever they want on their own terms. So I think it's actually getting more ethical as like the sexy platforms where the individual is able to monetize by themselves mm -hmm. keep coming up. Yeah. So you argue that it could be a benefit for people watching porn, specifically dudes, because then maybe it like kind of, it's that sexual release rather than right. releasing it at a time where it would be highly inappropriate. Yeah, maybe they do have a date planned, but they, f they, they do their beforehand so then when they go to the date they're not just thinking about how to get in her pants only right maybe that's like that release is done and they can actually focus on the interaction if they do want a genuine connection mm -hmm. rather than just being you know horn dogs the whole time because they're so frustrated mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like it, it can only be beneficial because if it was if porn didn't exist they would find something to fap to still i'd mm -hmm. feel like the answer is not to remove fappable content <laughs> I'm sure even back in the caveman days, it's like scriptures yeah. on the cave and like no, they that would they be, found yeah. like a yeah, caveman right. erotica with like stick figures right. on a wall of right. like doggy style. 
too. Yeah, it's prostitution. Been around yeah. Super long time. So it's the commerce just with sex in general has just yeah. always been around. Yeah. No, definitely. I feel like it's actually um, the creation of porn and, and allowing people to just make it freely, like OnlyFans and stuff, is actually reducing the need for people to feel like they have to be prostitutes to get money. Because instead of actually having sex with people on the street, now they can just upload a video and make money. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I, I think know. just everything in moderation. Yeah. Everything. You know, I, as long as it's not getting in the way of your job. And right. Like your but that's also up to the, and like, the individual's discretion. Right. Right. So, yeah, like, to determine when it's, just, it's an issue versus when it's not an issue. Self control. Yeah. Self control. I, 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 I err on that off, side too. You know? Me too. I just like let people do what they want in their personal time. I also time. could see how like porn could actually keep a relationship together because, say, like the couple's very busy or they just the magic of like the intimacy is gone, but they still get along as a couple. Instead of him leaving to go find a mistress, maybe he just faps to porn and then they stay together. Hmm. So I don't know. I see both sides. Uh, yeah. I don't see it. It doesn't have to be home wrecking. I feel like people who are going to be home wreckers are probably going to be cheaters or whatever, regardless of if there's porn out there or not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I tend to agree with that. I don't think that would be the sole reason. Yeah. Unless of course you just get carried away with it. Right. In but which that's case, addiction sure can deeper, happen with anything. Though. Yeah. It's not deeper the porn issues thing. Just that. Interesting. Yeah. Addi people who are going to be addicted to something could be like any addicted to drugs or mm -hmm. gambling or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. This might be an uncomfortable question, but like I said, you're welcome to not answer it if you want to. I'll we'll cut it figure, out. We, yeah. I just yeah, figure it'd no be worries. kind of an intriguing question to ask. Let's say you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. Would you be comfortable with your daughter? doing the same thing that you do for an occupation oh i would definitely be comfortable with that you'd be totally fine yeah i would be totally fine with that because she's i she's able to do it from the comfort of her own home she's not having to go out and put herself in like weird situations to try to make money because it's like sometimes you know in like the the business world we've seen women who feel like pressure to sleep with the boss or whatever to climb their way up socially it's like with the online stuff she can make however much money she wants doing whatever she wants because there's lots of people who make their money and they don't even have to like go all the way maybe they just post sexy pictures you know just whatever she's comfortable with you know in the comfort of her own home with whoever is consenting and she gets to decide that i think that's awesome gives her the power to do it anywhere she wants without having to feel like she's a slave to the nine to five grind that you know the rest of society often gets sucked into i think it's cool if she was down for it to be like okay i'll just give her some advice on how to put her identity out there in a way that doesn't give away like her address and her full name like give her like a internet safety guidance it's like okay here you go you've had some mm. interesting run-ins with that because didn't, yeah didn't you have a, like a fan set a trash can on fire or something yeah. like that what yeah the arson you incident. had an arson incident yeah okay so that's not a common thing I mean, graham has never experienced what? an arson incident what was what was that like uh, it was very strange because I heard a loud bang. I was playing video games. I think I was playing Diablo 3 when it came out. And I was in my room, but I heard like a bang from, the, from like outside somewhere. And so I went to go look. I couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, as I got closer to the kitchen where like the driveway is, I started to smell burning. And I'm like, I leave an oven on? Do I leave the stove on? Or, like, is there a heater that's left on somewhere? Like, what is happening? And I couldn't figure it out because like nothing was on. Nothing was in the attic. It didn't smell like a heater going crazy. And then I looked out my kitchen window because I had like the blinds on. I had to pull back the blinds and my trash can was on fire. And unfortunately, it was in a, the one spot where I didn't have a camera. <laughs> the one oh, spot. Did they, no. did they know that? Possibly. Yeah. I feel like they were probably trying to or find something to do. Yeah. Because um, my trash can, it wasn't at the street. They had to come up like to the, in the driveway. Oh, Interesting. Wow. Near, and the bang was because it exploded against the garage door and like Whoa. the metal reverberating. No way. Yeah. And so like what I What exploded I had, in the trash can? Uh, I think there was like, uh, some alcohol bottles. Okay. So if they drop like a match in there type uh, of thing or something, sure. okay. Or like maybe they had something also like that would burn like at some if they dropped a bottle in or something. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, because there was already bottles in there, right? So like all the things that could have blown up were like already in the trash can, mm -hmm. anyways. But yeah, that's what the police suspected because it happened like in the like in the middle of the night. And it, it wasn't in a place where it would overheat because it was mm. covered like under the garage awning, so it wasn't like the sun Yikes. beating down. Okay. So yeah, it was very scary though, because it was literally like five inches away from my Jeep tire, and then also two inches away from the grass. 
Oh man. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. It was just like a perfect like meltdown, not touching anything. Jeez, that's freaky. And like the trash can melted to the point where then it became like a flat piece of like melted together plastic with all the contents inside. Like like on top of it, it looked like a work of like modern art almost because it was just about like this long, big. Yeah. How long was it on fire for? Uh, I think about 30 minutes and what's really unfortunate is that because I get swatted so much when I called in about this the police didn't take it seriously at first this is before I made the safe word yeah and so they thought that I was a prankster on myself whoa yeah that was an issue so they the the police were like five minutes away right and it took them like 20 minutes to come out and put the fire out yeah did you not want to go out there with like a hose and just like spray it down no because I didn't know if the person did it was still lurking around mm, sure that yeah, because it was at nighttime. It was yeah. dark. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Tricky. What are some other experiences you've had? Or some, like, let's say unexpected, uh, let's, unexpected things that would happen that come with, like, this level of fame? Um, I guess, of fame. I guess more expected, but another thing that I had to deal with is stalkers showing up at the house. That has been super scary because there was a, I don't know if you read about it, the guy from Estonia. Mm. There was a guy from Estonia who I had convinced himself that he was going to marry me. And he had sold all of his possessions back in Estonia, even his house, even sold his cat or did something with his cat, got rid of it. And he brought just like himself, I guess, some clothes and um, like, a, like a saxophone case because he played saxophone mm -hmm. to America and was just streaming himself trying to find me trying to get me to come find him he'd put where he was in his titles of his stream and it was like um like alec plus caitlin forever was plus he, amaranth yeah. forever the title would change sometimes but like at this starbucks waiting for you was he getting viewers he's got like four or five but that's enough of yeah, viewers sure. to like uh, to egg attract on, haters yeah. to egg him on and try to dox me and stuff and they did they they, they gave him my address because they you know i've, I've swatted yeah. so it was already doxed and then he showed up trying to break into my house, essentially. Like, to him, I'm sure he felt like, you know, he wasn't trying to cause harm. But it's like, when someone's that crazy, they can be harmful. Yeah. And so he was trying to, like, get into the house. He would try to open the doors, try to, like, go around to the windows, like, tap on the windows, trying to find a way to get in. Because he felt like he was there and that I was going to be his wife. Was, was he, like, I mean, obviously he's not mentally, right, like, sound. What happened to the guy? I called police on him and they detained him the first time. Uh, they took him somewhere, I guess, and then they dropped him off, I guess, somewhere, to, like away from my house, and he was issued a, like a trespassing, um, what, what, like order? I don't know what it a is. Warrant or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. And so then he disappeared for like order. Yeah. a year, and then he came back, same thing again. Tried to come to my house and everything, called the police on him, and this time they like, they arrested him actually and they threw him in a jail cell. Is so, he still in jail? I don't think so. He's been released. <laughs> Wouldn't he be like deported? You, know, you would think thought, that, right? but apparently they don't do that unless it's like a felony and apparently stalking and trying to break in your house is not a felony. But how long can he get like a travel visa to the United States? I have That's no I idea. Thought. Like there's gotta be a limit where he's gotta go back. You would think so. I don't know what that yeah, limit is. Yeah, but it's, is, not the, it's not the responsibility of the local police to check your visa status. Oh, that's unless, like the ice unless or there's something that triggers it, like a like a felony. Got it. Interesting. Yeah, because that's not their job. They don't have a database of your legal status here. Got it. When was the last time you tried like tried to do anything? Was that March? Wait, like recent? Recent. I also True. have the big guard dog too. Who that guard like, dog was yeah. scary. That was freaky. Yeah, he is so attuned to knowing when something is wrong because the first time that the guy showed up at my house. That he hadn't even come up to the door yet. He was walking up the driveway quietly because we saw on the, those camera footage mm -hmm. after what he was doing. And my dog, the second he stepped foot on the driveway part where it starts going up the ramp, my dog started freaking out, barking. And he couldn't even see him. No window, no nothing. Like just enclosed just, like, in a room. He just heard it and knew. Wow. Yeah, I would not want to come face to face with that dog. Yeah, no. Cool. That was horrifying. Face to face. Face to face with that dog. That was horrifying. So I see you're going to be boxing in August, right? No, July 1st. July Is it July 1st? I have one month. That's coming up. I know. So how did? So what led up to that? Why, why say yes to boxing? Well, it was a really cool invite from Spanish streamers, like actual Spain. 
and they invited me to participate in their version of creative clash kind of it's called la velada it's the third time they're doing it third year and uh, the before like their boxing events you think creative clash is big no 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 it's not big la velada gets like two to three million concurrent viewers oh wow. my god just for the online portion and this year they're having it at the biggest stadium in madrid it's like a brand new football stadium soccer whatever yeah. you want to call it Sixty thousand seats sold out within an hour who else is fighting like how big of a thing is this um it's mostly spanish streamers so most americans won't really know them isn't it's, streaming huge in spain though oh yeah it's big that's what i thought yeah like, some they of the are biggest streamers very, are like right. spanish streamers yeah yeah it is the one hosting it he's got so many viewers all the time he's huge he these spanish streamers are so big to where they get invited to just like cover the the professional football games over there like so they go on the field they interact with the no players way. they get their own vip room to Makes stream sense. reacting to the good games business yeah no they're huge they're like celebrities over there wow like actual like celebrities like people think like oh streamer youtuber celebrities no 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 it's not the same so <laughs> how much of this for you boxing is like a business move to get your brand out there and to get your name out there versus like this is a personal thing that i want to do it's say, probably like, about can, okay it's probably about like 40 percent opportunity and 60 percent i want to do it because the thing that i said yes to was when i saw that they used the the helmets because i know that it can still be like impact concussions yeah. but at least less chance of a broken nose sure so they like, like faster physically recover time um and i just think it's such a cool experience to be like invited by people from a foreign country and to go mm -hmm. to europe yeah and to get to experience all that and i'm the only american invited so that's cool yeah. i felt like it was a huge honor right so it's like oh shit, okay. so what's it like for you training right now uh right now i'm training each of my sessions are two hours and i'm training like three to four times a week so it's it's hard to balance it all because uh, i'm in a mixture of going to the gym and then my coach coming to my house yeah are you sparring at all i'm about to be i'm yeah we're working on that this get, month get as much sparring done as possible yeah. so i'll say yeah. i under trained i should have been doing like five to six days a week uh and i was doing one hours but like five to six and sparring way more i sparred three times before the fight and that did not prepare me at all like i yeah. should have like michael reeves sparred like 12 times and michelle sparred like 30 times it was wow. like a few dozen times and she was sparring like really like good people yeah i'm lucky though because uh spain does not have great boxing coaches or really any boxing champions so her experience and her her like available resources are way less than ours are in america um so her technique does not look very good <laughs> and she's like physically condition wise i'm like much more athletic so it looks like i have the advantage right now luckily who's for your me. opponent meichi she's a spanish streamer how old is she same age as me 29 okay. okay we're the same height same age same weight technically but very different uh, physical condition sure yeah so that what's a part sense. of your training that you're doing right now are you doing like cardio and then the pads it's some cardio it's mostly technique and pads and footwork and okay. things like that um yeah just practicing the, the technique is the most important so that way like you can put more power into each punch mm -hmm. and like work on your stability so you don't just like tumble over and stuff yeah, for me i think the cardio is the big one because you get winded so fast like doing the sparring one minute feels like 10 minutes yeah for no it's crazy it's like the mental aspect too just really gets you when you're there it's like everything you learn kind of goes out the window yeah it's wild yeah i think that a lot of it's going to come down to just instinct which is why yeah. i'm focusing more on learning good technique rather than sparring with bad technique mm -hmm. so i'm hoping like to train muscle memory it'll just kick in when i'm like on autopilot you know yeah so it's tough though to juggle that with the streaming because as we talked about the time is worth so much money yeah because even though like they're they're they do pay for your trip and stuff they try to compensate for your time it's not the same yeah amount of money as how much my time is actually worth yeah so it's but difficult it, it seems as though at least right now you're kind of not slowing down a bit but like taking it easier like yeah, are you it nervous seems like right that now? to people like, <laughs> oh it does it does okay. seem like that because they don't see how much like i'm doing on sure. the back end so for me i feel like i don't have much more free time than i ever did before because okay. now i'm just doing a bunch of different stuff yeah so yeah the boxing takes up so much time 
Yeah, for me, it was the time leading up, like an hour leading up to it, I couldn't work because right. in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I got to finish up this and like, I, I can't fully focus. Right. And then, so that's an hour, at, you know, before. And then an hour after I get back, I have to shower and then it takes me time to like get back yeah. into the... Yeah, it cuts in, know. even though training's two hours, it cuts into like four or five hours it of does. the day. Oh yeah. It's crazy. And then you do that however many times a week, it's like productivity cut in half, even though you're not having more free time. Yeah. Are you nervous going into it? Not really nervous, really? I guess. More of excited to get it over with so that sure. I don't feel like I have to juggle as many things. I get that. That's yeah. how I felt. Afterwards, I was so happy that it was over. Yeah. Yeah, I was so happy. But I thought if I could do that, I could do anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, because originally when I agreed to it, I thought I could be able to stream all of it. But it's it's hard to be able to stream all of it because you don't want your opponent to know everything. Yes. Yeah. So then you realize like, oh, actually, I don't want to teach them how to how to box by watching me because that's the advantage I have so in America you know what, is better coaching. You know what Michelle did? And her? Hmm. did you watch her boxing video? Oh, you got to watch smart. it. Watch her boxing video. It was like watching a movie. So just oh, really? like, yeah, just for the storyline, you got to watch it. But she said she hired a team of people to full-time watch uh, Andrea Botez, all of her streams, just to she see if she revealed anything about her boxing training so that they could use that and study against it. And she said like months into it, she released one teaser video on her stream and the other team or, or Michelle's people caught that, analyzed it, and then they adjusted her training based on that. On like Oof. a quick 20 seconds out of months it was wild. So yeah, I mean, you're, you're right on in terms of streaming, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't believe it. I saw it when Michael Reeves posted, he did like a quick thing on like Instagram or something like that and went around and I showed it to my boxing coach and he was looking at it, he's like, okay, we could do this, I see what he's doing, we could do this. And that's why I never posted anything on myself. Yeah. It like didn't I, work, I it didn't work anyway, but. Um, but like I can just show you personally. I would love to, yeah. My opponent. <laughs> now, while you're pulling that up, have you thought about monetizing your boxing by like taking like photos and oh, that would be in good. sets? Like, because I feel like you know, nothing like I'm not saying anything too explicit, but like you know, that's a good idea. You could be doubling up the work, you know. Yeah, this is an idea. I guess for me, it's like I need someone to help facilitate that, and then they could be making more money at home. So you could, you could be yeah, selling we split the, hand, the, like the, the rub and wrap and stuff like so. that. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Like sweatband. Oh, uh, that's why I said order sweatband. Michelle did the, the wraps yeah. with uh, she sold out. Seek Discomfort. She sold them out. Yep. Yeah. Wow. And those weren't even used. No, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> those were new. And those were brand new ones. They look cool, though. Good job, Michelle. They did. I thought it was a too niche of a product, but the fact that she sold out was amazing. That or they is only really made pretty like, crazy. Like, how many people are going to buy hand wraps for boxing? But people feel inspired because she also released the the boxing program. So if you sell that with the boxing program, people oh. are going to buy it so that they could go train. You know what? You should buy your boxing program. Oh, that's not that a bad idea. Is that my coach is does not want to release any of his co teachings. Otherwise, he would do it himself. Have you changed up your diet? Um, this? not really. I, I've cut down on like sugary stuff that I can't analyze. You know, like if it's just like a smoothie or whatever, mm -hmm. then I, I, I don't know the macros of it that I won't do it. But um, for the most part, I've already eat pretty healthy. So I'm just like increasing protein really. Okay. Yeah. So that's about normal for me. I'm trying to find if anyone clipped any boxing, but most of the clips are just bikini stuff. Um, How many people do you have working with you right now? to handle the whole business oh, that's a great question Ooh, at the office like the the one my immediate assistants there's like four or five full time but then like if you do like the extended universe of real work right mm -hmm. it's like 17 employees roughly maybe, and what maybe. is that what, what do they do um they help manage accounts of other creators but they're they're the only fans like they'll help send out content and stuff mm -hmm. um make sure it's uploaded get sent to fans things like that so yeah they help manage like just other creators social media or like their paid platforms fansly only fans etc and how do they find creators to help out um right now we have like girls who approach us really hmm. for looking for management but uh we'll also just like send out messages to people if we if it's someone like 
who I'm friendly with or whatever to ask if they need help with anything because we'll like offer like DMCA services too. Or sometimes mm. girls will have an issue where for some reason they've been locked out of their OnlyFans account. Like there's like a ban or something suspension put on their account by the algorithm because it detected something was against TOS. And so we'll help them get back into it because we know the people mm-hmm. at OnlyFans who can unban them. I think right. those girls that you reach out to for management, a huge perk would be they could join you in a sleep stream. So it keeps it yeah. dynamic for you. And it's also like, you know, a mutually beneficial relationship. They get the exposure of being no, on Twitch. It's better for everybody. You yeah, know? they do get priorities for like collabs and things. Yeah. I heard a rumor, actually, I don't know if it's so, so much of a rumor, but that you watch Netflix while you're Twitch streaming <laughs> or you watch shows like you're not fully present while you're doing it. Uh, I used to do that more during ASMR. I don't really do as much ASMR these days, but uh, yeah, that has happened before. Yes, uh, on my side monitor. If I was feeling too sleepy, I'd put on like a movie or a show. And you wouldn't explicitly tell chat like, "Hey guys, I'm watching." Like, this. not necessarily. Sometimes I would, but a lot of times I'm just like watching it while I'm like doing my little ASMR stuff. How could you? How could you focus on doing two things at once? Well, like that? if you've done ASMR for a long time, you realize a lot of it doesn't require focusing. So, uh, explain yeah. to me what can you do ASMR on one of these microphones? Yeah, it'd be like scratching. Like, here, let me turn it up. Oh, oh, oh. I got it. And I'd be like whispering like this, or like scratching the microphone. I hear a plane now. Or I'd be like tapping objects, things like that. That is so satisfying. Is it really? Yeah. And make them go to sleep. Or like, I get stuff really close to it and be like, things like that. Oh, that's oh my god. That's not as good. That's oh. not as good. That was perfect timing. That okay, freaked wait, 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 me wait, wait, out. Wait. I was like listening. I turned it all the way up. And I'm like, I've never heard of ASMR. Alex was just like, no, I've never heard of ASMR. All over he had He's doing ASMR right into his ears. He He's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Graham, you, your turn for ASMR. I want to see what you got. I don't get it. I don't get yeah, ASMR. Yeah, do it. Hey, guys. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Just give it a gentle tap. Add me on Instagram. Oh, and add me on Snapchat as well. I'm posting vlogs on there now. So you'll be able to get a behind the scenes. I think you just found your new channel. Graham is smart. Smash the like button. Now. Okay, let me give it a shot, Alex. Okay, All done. right, before you do that, I got to say, yeah. hers is way more like... Like some, I've never listened to ASMR on headphones. It's game changing. I feel like you need more uh, second saliva all, in your mouth, Graham. I could tell like hers was better. <laughs> okay, Jack, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> hey guys, check out the Iced Coffee Hour Club. IcedCoffeeHour.club. If you guys want some exclusive content, because we got some really exciting stuff going over there, an extra episode every single month, you can only find it there. We can even do ASMR if you guys want us to there. We're pretty flexible. (laughs) (laughs) Ow! Dude! Anyway. You like that? Yeah, but you laughed in the mic in my ear. I'm sorry. Anyway, that was really good. Oh, thanks. Especially the... You liked it. Oh, that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the part people like in ASMR. It's like <laughs> yeah. when your mouth starts clicking, you know? <laughs> yeah, they do. They yeah, the, yeah. They love the mouth clicks. Yeah. I heard a story about you trying to get a monopoly on like OF content or hot tub live streams because you had this back and forth with this other girl. And, and it was competitive back and forth between you and her. And then something happened with Pickle Ricks. Is I this mean, lots of things have happened with Pickle Ricks. Yeah. Something about you oh, buying yes, yes, all yes, of yes. them. I know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so so what happened here? What was the story? So um, the hot tub meta, after I brought the hot tub inside, people started doing that. So then I started buying floaties for the hot tub. People started doing that. And I noticed every time I bought a new floaty, suddenly everyone would buy that floaty because uh, it was just like Amazon Prime or whatever. Mm-hmm. I got a banana floaty. Suddenly people would have the same banana floaty and be doing the same thing. I would get like a unicorn or something. They would get the unicorn and they'd do the same thing. So I was like, I want to get something funny, but I don't want everyone to just copy it right away because it's not funny very long. So I, I got Pickle Rick. And what I did was I saw there were only like 20 available and then left in stock. And I bought all of them. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew that they'd have to wait for a while for the vendor to restock because it was the only pickle rig floaty. Wow. Like on Amazon. 
And See, so, that's pretty smart. Yeah, I bought so, I bought twenty of them because what were they like twenty dollars a piece? You know what you should have done is create your own floaty. I thought and about then that. sold them to everyone else who wants to buy them. I, mean, I should have done that. Yeah. I or a floaty I with your face it. on them. Didn't you and have a, everyone else? I read something about a f- pool floaty company or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was part of the private and, equity. They had like a oh okay yeah it Could was, it was in there a deal with them you know yeah I I, I should have I guess I was just too busy like on the grind because of how much my time was worth it I didn't want to put that much mental energy into it but yeah that would have been hilarious hmm. um so yeah I bought Smart. all the pickle ricks <laughs> and it worked because for like like three weeks maybe maybe a month no one else had a pickle rick and then did people get pickle ricks yes oh, no way when right. they got restocked they actually yes. bought them yes. so you did the right thing te- technically speaking like it proved you right yeah to do that yeah because then it looked like they were all copying me after it became established that i'm the one of the pickle ricks wow yeah because if yeah. it all happens around the same time yeah, no one really like, knows, who knows like who started it they just see a bunch of girls like why is everyone on bananas yeah yeah so what are you doing today to remain like that competitive um, today I don't, I don't really have as much, like, I don't have like a meta right now, I guess. Cause I've been like so distracted between moving and boxing and all these other platforms too now. Um, yeah, right now I guess I'm, I'm still trying to get there. I want to become the party house cause I have like this huge space Yeah. and you see there's like contractors here still cause they're still doing some construction, but then after they're done, I want to be able to like host events here and fly everyone <laughs> in and, and do like big slumber parties with girls. Well, you know, well. if you're looking for attendees, you know, you're looking to fill some space, just go, hey. ahead, and just go ahead and let us know. <laughs> Parties with a <laughs> ton of girls, know, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. What I find interesting is it seems like you're kind of trying to downplay a lot of your accomplishments up until this moment because, like, you're walking us through your story and there's no chance that you were that lucky that many times in a row where, like, just, like, the natural flow of, I don't know, the current you were in just kind of took you to success after success after success. So you need to yeah, take. well, I think it's also just hard work too, because it's it's the willingness to be on and do things people aren't willing to do. Because a lot of girls like who use their body for money, you know, there's like a reason they they do that is because it seems like a shortcut, right? And there are a lot of girls who will spend time doing that, but in the streaming space, also, there's not that many who are like super hard grinding, um, and will just be on as long as it takes to main, like get that efficiency out of their work. So a lot of them still want to enjoy their time. They want to like travel. They want to have free time. And that's nice, but I'm like paranoid, you know, I don't know how long it'll last. You're very much goal driven towards having yeah. a sanctuary and like building up enough income. Yeah. Passively. It's like, I still want to go and I want to de-stress on certain mornings, but like, I don't, you know, I'll go to the barn and I'll come back. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I'll work. It's not like I'm traveling everywhere. So you think one of the main things that sets you apart from the competition is the, is the, the work ethic. Yeah, no, definitely. Cause it's like, you have to be online in order for the algorithm to go in your favor. Cause for Twitch, they, they reward time streamed and nowadays like you can you can kind of piggyback if you get like a an org like otk or or someone or offline tv they kind of like they feed off of each other because they're using the same fan group essentially so Mm -hmm. that that fan group who is like a fan of the content also go to like every stream and so your streams don't have to be long to get viewership or stuff because you're all just sharing one big audience essentially but if you're kind of by yourself you don't have that like feedback loop Mm from like this character arc of like stories all intermingling and you kind of just have to grind out the algorithm hours if you're a solo person. Hmm. What's your biggest insecurity? I would say maybe my inherent entertaining level (laughs) because by myself it feels like it's hard to keep up with what currently people find entertaining because I do find like drama, drama, drama entertaining and it's hard to kind of farm that when you don't have like a content house or like other streamers that you're constantly collabing with to kind of feed that into. So you think that you need to chase the trends in order to be entertaining. You think that you don't have that innate, just like ability to no, I don't be think entertaining. So. And it also is harder too for women because we aren't as seen as like relatable by the majority of Twitch audience, which is male, mm-hmm. you know? People typically will watch if she's attractive, but they don't really watch because they feel like that they relate to her per se. That some of the females might, but that's not the majority of Twitch audience still. It's still mostly males. So it's kind of hard hmm. to feel like you're entertaining truly because part of it is like, yeah, they are there for your appearance. You know, that's like the value that a lot of them found you through. And some will stay for your personality, but 
there's also some weird stigma behind like watching women still so like she's not gonna fuck any of you you know people say that in the chat mm-hmm. at each other being like why do you guys watch and just donate and, and subscribe she's not gonna fuck you like as if like that's the only reason why they would associate with women is to to be able to fuck them mm-hmm. there's still very much like that mm-hmm. that dominating um societal stigma i guess and what do you feel like the reason is that they're there watching for such a long time I think some have just like formed a kind of uh, community feeling because they talk to each other in chat, right? Mm. And they'll like support the streamer. They enjoy the streamer's personality. They just feel it's kind of like a, a, a virtual hangout session, you know? Um, it's kind of some, it's similar to why some people support guy streamers, but there's just less who feel like they can enjoy a female streamer if sure. she's not fucking them or if that fantasy isn't there that she might one day maybe. So some are just like very naysayers like why would you watch a female she's not gonna sex you because they don't see females as like friends or entertainers right they see females as like an accessory so what do you think is the biggest threat to humanity biggest threat to humanity oh god um i think ourselves destroying the planet not having a planet environmental changes I, i think it's not really the environment changing i think it's just humans like destroying ourselves either like both the environment but then also each other i think we like the social media aspect encourages drama and conflict and disagreements and you see people doing crazier and crazier things ai as well which yeah. is human generated well, ai is the least of my concern to be honest i think it's more of what people choose to do because you see p- the news covering only negative things mm-hmm. people are more likely to to go on crazy violent rampants if they feel like that's what's getting that's what will get them attention because it's like the media while uh, making people aware of it's also kind of glorifying like shootings and things like that. Right. They're only Some media outlets don't more. release the names of the, the yeah. people that do that, which I think is kind of nice. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know if that really helps as much if you're already insane. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, I want people to talk yeah. about me, whether... I think that yeah. was actually a really yeah. good answer. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that completely. Yeah, how would you fix the economic crisis? <laughs> <laughs> how would doomed. you fix the debt ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> We're doomed. We're doomed. No, but I feel like if you just eradicated humans, like the world would probably thrive, like environmentally. I would, I, I would like actually 100 really percent agree with that. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want it to happen, right? But, but that I know that it I would, though. Be, yeah, I have to it'd be better for virtually every other species. Yeah, People are like, "Oh no, the world is dying. We should leave and go to Mars." I'm like, "You know what? We probably should, and the world wouldn't die." You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's go to before it dies. Maybe the world will come bounce back. There was like some kind of limitation for a bit in Beijing. You know how the the pollution is really bad there. Where like I don't remember it was a few years ago now, maybe several years ago, where they had a mandate where like the driving was restricted, and within two weeks of cutting down on the amount of people driving, like the skies cleared up and it was wow. beautiful, and there mm. was no more fog. Yeah interesting yeah so i feel like it's just humans like we're the biggest threat to ourselves I yeah agree. also i got a question because i asked you earlier if you're a vegetarian you said no but also you have this like crazy intense passion yeah. for animals yeah it's weird i know why uh why because i'm the exact same like i love <laughs> animals i'm the same as same, same as grandma yeah. you yeah. know a little spider gets inside i'm gonna catch it and you know, release it outside. I'm not going to kill it, squish it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Very passionate towards animals. I love all kinds of them, but I still eat meat. Like what's your justification for that? I don't know. I don't know if I really have a justification other than like I'm a product of my environment and I grew up eating meat. So like, I don't know. I was kind of just like, I'm used to it now. And, and in the back of my mind, like it does bother me, but uh, currently I guess I'm just not in a position where it's like, there's enough of a replacement that I'm like, ooh, like available all the time. Where it's like, if I'm if I crave something because I've grown up with it, then I had to eat. I don't feel good about it, but mm-hmm. it's also like, if I I feel that hopeless feeling too. Where it's like, if I don't eat meat, will they stop killing animals? Will they stop doing the factory farms? No, mm-hmm. right. That's so then it's I just like too. it sounds like an asshole thing to say though. <sighs> so it's like I don't like saying it. Yeah, but I also like, like if, if everyone collectively says, "All right, we can all shake hands and agree we're not going to do this." I'll be a part of it. Right? But if it's just me, and it'll continue regardless. I'm like, that's okay. I, do, tough, I also like, don't think that ethical that argument. It is. Yeah, it right. is. Right. It is, and I totally get people being like, "Well, I do it just for me, so I feel better about myself and like what I'm supporting, what I'm not supporting." And I'm totally for that. I think that's awesome. One day, I would like to switch to where it's like, if I know my meat's coming 
from an ethical source. I think that's really cool. Like if they have like a hunter, he goes out and he kills a deer and you buy meat from that hunter who killed a deer because there was too many on a reservation or yes. somewhere. Like I would love to switch to where it's like, I'm only helping the environment and nothing is going to waste right. and all that. I don't know if I could ever get to that point or what service you would yeah. even use for that. But I think that kind of thing could be like, a much better solution yeah it's just but, like yeah. those 30 day chickens like that's so sad they just grow oh. up to just be like yeah, or the ones so what was it the ma was it the male chickens get killed instantly it's oh, so yeah. sad yeah 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 but yeah. that's also what we say but if let's say we went to the grocery store and those eggs were double the price or that meat was double the price how many people are actually going to choose that with their wallet as well true but also yeah. at the same point it's the same argument as everything else it's like me choosing to buy the more expensive one is not going to stop it, the cheaper because the other option produced. is still there yeah. yeah yeah and it's also a tough situation because it's like if we all collectively just stopped eating meat that would put so many people who have ranches and land yeah. out of business and you might think like well good but they're also the people that often grow the crops mm -hmm. and it's like well you're not going to eat meat what are you going to eat the plants but if they can't if they can no longer afford to maintain the land that the plants also grow on because the animals are probably uh, it's more lucrative to sell cattle and stuff then you also don't have a place to grow plants so i think what really needs to happen is that the government needs to step in and have more regulations on like, like humane the the production animals. of like the the meat where it's coming from the the facility to make sure the animals are taken care of not, not over production like i just think there needs to be more government regulation i don't think that pressure should fall on the individual consumer hmm. but I, it's hard to like find any movement on that because you can't just say let's not eat meat because right now is currently like the the whole farming industry that's the more profitable market and then you don't have places to grow plants if that's the alternative so it's like yeah have you guys heard about the monopoly on crops? No. So there's an entire YouTube video I watched, and basically these companies that make the seeds for crops, they have like a IP on the seed. So they sell the seed to a farmer. The farmer plants it, they grow a crop, but the farmer cannot replant that seed or replant seeds from that crop because that company had genetically modified that seed to be able to, whatever, mm. grow faster, better, mm. you know, more, more yield they have to rebuy the ability to be able to plant it. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so, weird. So I didn't know you could have intellectual property on genetics. So that is crazy. Yeah. So, wow. I don't know. Just another, they ever, they always try to control something. Yeah. I've also read that like, um, with the plants that are genetically modified to grow faster is that they're not as nutrient dense because they didn't have time to mature and get all the nutrients out of it. So they're actually not as healthy as like the original plant for you. So that's like another weird thing right? Yeah, to think weird. about. It's like, do you want it fast or <laughs> do you want the health benefits? <laughs> like the full nutrient value. That's kind of the point, right? Yeah, that's yeah, the point yeah, of the organic, so, non-GMO, yeah. whatever. Food, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why people say like, I don't see a difference. I don't taste a difference. Like it's not in the taste. Oh. It's in what it's like doing to your body. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's harming your body. You're just not getting as much nutrients out right. of it. Yeah. Cool. I gotta say, you're very well spoken. And, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you're an you. incredibly smart you business. Should be, woman. Yeah, you should be doing more podcasts. See, the problem yeah. is, it doesn't make money for me. No one wants uh, to hear it. Uh, I don't know. I would disagree. This currently, yeah, it doesn't. I would disagree. I, you have I, a way. I'm all ears. I'm always open. I, 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 I would disagree with that. Yeah. I think if you go on podcasts with different audiences, yes. I mean, the amount of exposure, mm. plus if they do clips, they do shorts. Sure, they if do I go on this podcast, like, absolutely. Yeah. But having my own doesn't. Uh, really yeah, having your own, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, after yeah, we yeah. had our first, oh, so Stella after Barry. we had Stella Berry yeah. on our podcast, um, I'll say like probably since then, probably 50. OnlyFans like models and stuff have like reached out like some cool, pretty big ones too have like DM'd us like hey can I get on the iced coffee or can I do this can I do that yeah no definitely so. like I love doing podcasts and other people's but like throwing my own it's kind of hard because if you already have a community of like guys guys don't necessarily want to hear women talk about serious subjects it has to be more of like the what's that really successful girl podcast where they just talk about their their Call flings yeah. yes that type of thing mm -hmm. typically for like yeah. if you have a coomer audience right yeah. <laughs> no call her dad i've listened but to yeah. it it's really good yeah she has some really good people on there yeah yeah well recently as of late like in the beginning the podcast oh was yeah extremely well, I, vulgar I, and like, I don't know about the beginning but yeah now that's like, how yeah. it gets popular I really yeah. enjoyed it yeah i haven't listened to yeah. it recently yeah but no i definitely love doing podcasts yeah. for sure i find them a refreshing pace yeah cool
Refreshing change of pace. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for your yeah. hospitality. Really appreciate Guys, by it. the yeah, way, she you. bought us sushi. Okay. Yeah, she also like you. Ubered us and showed us her her horses. Okay. So she's been <laughs> Which is on the vlog channel. Gracious. Yeah. It's on the vlog channel. The hospitality she's, was yeah, she's been an absolutely yeah. incredible, very, very kind person. So oh, thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. Anytime you come to Vegas, let us know. Mm -hmm. TwitchCon. We can, we owe you sushi. Oh. Feel free to say whatever you want to the cameras if you want to shout something out. Yeah, if you guys want to follow me anywhere, the most reliable place is going to be my link tree. Downbad.com is a URL because who knows by the time you watch this, maybe my usernames will be completely different. I don't know. But downbad.com, easy to remember. Cool. cool. Thank you so much. And until, until next, next time. time.